In Ireland, the carrot family is represented by 41 species, of which 23 occur in Offaly. Worldwide, the number of species stands at something like 3,700. Uh, all of them, or most of them, instantly recognisable by the very distinctive inflorescence they have, the umbel, which gives the family its popular name, the umbelliferae. Now, the most common large example of the umbelliferae in the county is hogweed, the familiar hogweed of almost every hedgerow. So this is our species of choice in order to demonstrate the, the pollination strategy, the, uh, the floral structure of, uh, of the family as a whole. Uh, we could have chosen many other large flowered species. Um, cow parsley is a good example. Many other species could be used, but uh, by its stature uh, and its, its, its commonness and its prominence in hedgerows ma makes this uh, our, the species of choice. Almost all members of the family have got these white inflorescences and in certain respects uh, they resemble uh, the inflorescences of members of the daisy family in as much as they consist of a large number of smaller flowers, sometimes hundreds of smaller flowers, as assembled in a flat top plate like, like, like this. Now, if we, if we look at the, the umbel, there t there's an individual umbel, you can see that it's made up of, of, of a, a large number uh, of secondary umbels, usually between 15 or, or between 15 and 30 of these uh, secondary umbels. If we look at the flower, the first thing that strikes us really in the umbel, whether, uh, whether it's primary or secondary, the first thing that strikes us is the way in which uh, the petals on the outer flowers are, are greatly enlarged and sometimes often uh, pink tipped. And uh, this is in order to enhance the visibility or the attractiveness of the umbel as a whole uh, to uh, potential visiting uh, pollinators. So wh what we're seeing here is uh, a certain division of labour between the flowers and the inflorescence as a whole. Now it's, it's not that advanced, uh, but that division of labour is taken to its extreme development in members of, of the daisy family. Now, um, so if you take a look again, we'll look at the individual flowers. Uh, pick this one here. Uh, very, there's a relatively simple in structure. Each, each of the little flowers has got four tiny sepals. Uh, there, there are the five petals. Uh, and there are five stamens uh, 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 which mature one after the other. And they also mature before the stigmas become settled. Now the, the term for that condition is protandry. We would say that the flowers are protandrous, meaning that the male parts ripen before the female, and they, this uh, increases the likelihood that cross-pollination will take place in preference to self-pollination. Self if we take the hand lens and look closely at the flower, you'll see in the centre we've got what look like two little horns. Uh, these are the stigmas, and you'll see that the stigmas are, they emerge from a little yellow turret which is covered with nectar. Nectar is secreted freely on that little, little turret and it, it, it is readily accessible uh, in abundance to a, a wide variety of short-tongued insects. One classic study in Germany counted 118 different species of insects visiting the, the flowers for their, their nectar. So it, it is in fact a veritable banqueting table. Uh, for, for, for insects. Um, also, uh, it's a favourite, it's a favourite hangout for crab spiders, uh, which you very frequently find lying in wait for visiting insects on, on the surface of the umbels. Uh, when we look or speak of the biodiversity support value of hogweed, it's worth remembering that much later in the year, when all this dies back, uh, the dead stems become hollow and they remain upstanding for a long period into the winter. And they become important also as, re as, 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 as uh, places where a lot of insects and other invertebrates can find, uh, can find shelter. Notably, for example, uh, earwigs. This is a favourite. These, uh, these kind of turret blocks um, are, are a favourite habitats for, for earwigs. Um, from our human point of view, 
This is a very important family because uh, quite a number of crop plants belong to the family. The most familiar would be, of course, carrot, uh, parsnip, uh, celery. Uh, but even more importantly, there's a very large number of, uh, of umbellifers, the fruits of which are used in, in seasoning for flavouring, etc., etc., and in enormous variety. Uh, familiar examples would be coriander, uh, cumin, uh, caraway and so on. But there are dozens and dozens of these all over the world which are used in, 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 in the cuisine of different parts, different parts of the world. Uh, our own hogweed was a great favourite in the past in an earlier agriculture with pigs. This is a time when pigs were much more uh, free foraging animals that would spend a lot of time rooting around in forests and so on. And they had a great fondness uh, for, for the roots. Hence, of course, the name of the plant, hogweed. But, and indeed the roots can be eaten by ourselves, they make a reasonable vegetable. But what's much more attractive from a culinary point of view is that early in the year, uh, when, the, uh, when the plant is beginning to, to, to produce its above ground parts, the, uh, the, the leaf, all the leaves, the stems etc. emerge from the ground wrapped up in uh, a leafy envelope which makes an extremely uh, tasty vegetable. Uh, the flavour uh, the flavor resemb somewhat resembling asparagus. Uh, lots of other uses as well, both in medicine and in uh, the cuisine of different parts of the world. Um, in parts of Northern and Eastern Europe in the past, for example, uh, the sap, which is fermentable, was used to make a, uh, an extremely potent liquor. Uh, but that same sap, that same sap contains a, a group of chemicals known as the Farana coumarins, which have the negative effect from our point of view uh, that they cause, uh, uh, they cause phytophotodermatitis, um, a condition where you've got very nasty blisters on whatever part of, of your skin comes in, in contact. And this is activated only in bright sunlight. So one has to be cautious, particularly if children are playing around when you've got a lot of, of this uh, in, in the hedgerows or meadows that, that you're, you're, you're playing in. Um, hogweed has a close relation, the giant hogweed, a uh, taller plant, much taller plant, uh, characteristic of, of the sides of rivers and so on, uh, which is much more dangerous in this respect because not only is the, the dermatitis more serious, but also it doesn't require so bright sunlight in which to activate it. Uh, the giant hogweed has turned up from time to time in Offaly, uh, but whenever it has, it, it is very quickly eradicated.